Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another session of Quranic words covered in depth from a usage perspective. We study words in the Quran with common root letters. Let's get started. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We start with a very common particle, amma, occurring 55 times in the Quran. Amma is a complicated word with many meanings, but I've tried to simplify it here. The main meaning is as for, used in the sense of a conditional sentence. For example, as for he who thinks himself without need, to him you give attention. Quran also uses amma to make comparisons and contrasts, in which case, it is repeated in the same sentence. For example, Allah says, As for those who believe, they know it is the truth from their Lord. But as for those who do not believe, they say, What does God mean by such a comparison? The reference to this verse is provided on this slide. But that should give you an idea of how the Amma is repeated to make comparison or contrast. Another meaning of amma is but. For example, but when he tries him and restricts his provision, he says, my Lord has humiliated me. A grammatical note, a fa comes in the response of a conditional sentence shown in red on this verse. You can insert a then to understand the function of the fa. Moving on to the next word. Another similar sounding particle is imma. It is a particle of option to mean either or whether. The first example shows the use of or. The second example shows the use of whether. In this verse, it is uncertain whether Allah will punish them or forgive them. Imma here is a little complicated because in this usage, it is composed from the particle in, which means if, plus an extra or redundant ma is added called ma zaeda to emphasize this conditional meaning of if. Please see the example to understand this usage. My Lord, if you should show me that which they are promised. Please look at this interesting verse with a double conditional as it is a perfect sentence to learn the conditional aspect of imma. Some translated imma as if, like we just saw in the last slide, but others have chosen to translate as whenever or but surely. But what is important here is that it is a conditional meaning. There is a response beginning with the first fa shown in red attached to man, so the condition is, whenever guidance comes to you from me, and the response is, whoever follows my guidance. Then there is another conditional with the particle man, meaning whoever, and the response to this condition is followed by a response with the second fa shown in red. There will be no fear concerning them. The next word we cover is amina, from the root letters of Hamza, Mim, and Nun. And this root occurs 879 times in the Quran. So you can imagine how important this root is. The verb amina in this context means to feel secure or safe. Here Allah is questioning if the people of the cities are feeling secure from his punishment. I picked this example next because it covers two verbal forms of this root. Amina, form one verb, and form eight verb, i'tamana. Now, amina is the verb we covered in the last slide, but here it is used in a transitive verb sense to mean entrusting with something. Here in context, entrusting another. The next word shown here, u'tumina, and it is pronounced this way because it is a passive form 8 verb. 
The original was i'tamana that I just mentioned before, and it means to be entrusted with. The subject is not mentioned, but the one entrusted should discharge his trust faithfully. And so far, I hope you are amazed by how accurately Quran uses these grammatical forms. This example shows a form for verb with a hamza before, making the verb sound as amena. This meaning of form for is causative, showing that someone made them safe. So here it is Allah, Lord of the house, who is making them safe from fear. Now, continuing with the example of form for verb, amena, the common meaning of this form is believe. Those who believe are also safe. So you can see the connection between the meanings of this word. Did you realize that when you recited those who believed, amenu, you were using form for of this verb in its plural form? Now, let's move on to the nouns from this root. The first noun is aman, to mean security. The second word on the list, amanatun, also means security, but it has another related meaning of calmness. In Surah 3, verse 154, when Muslims had anxiety, Allah sent amanatun, some translated it as security and some said calmness was instilled in the form of drowsiness or sleep. Note, the next word is an active participle, amin, and its plural and feminine forms are shown as aminin and amina. The next word, amana, is commonly used to mean trust, but can also mean charge or responsibility. And the second word on this slide, amin, is very well known in its use as an adjective to mean trustworthy. In Quran, Surah 26, verse 193, Allah says, the trustworthy spirit has brought down the Quran. I know everyone knows the meaning of Iman and Mu'min, but perhaps you can still learn something new by knowing that Iman is the verbal noun or master of the form for verb we looked at earlier. And Mu'min is the active participle of form for verb. Now moving on to two other roots. The first word is Amatun to mean bond woman or slave woman. And its plural is ima'un, occurring only two times in the Quran. The next word, untha, is an important word because it means female. In the example verse shown, Allah says, they call upon instead of him, none but female deities. Others say this word could also be referring to calling upon lifeless beings. The next word, anasa, is from the root alif, noon, and sin. And the past tense form one verb is anisa, to mean become familiar or friendly. Now, Quran does not use this form one but uses form four of this verb, anasa, to mean perceive or see something from a distance. We are all familiar with this verse shown here, where Moses perceived or saw a fire from a distance. Continuing the same route, but this is form ten verb, pronounced as istanasa, to mean to be sociable or get on familiar terms, and from that meaning, Quran uses it in this context about not entering houses until you ascertain you're welcome, or in other words, you have asked permission to enter or you drew attention to your presence.
Now let's look at the nouns from this root. Ins means mankind as opposed to other species such as jinn. Without the al attached to this word, the meaning is indefinite, referring to any man. Unas is plural and used in the Quran to refer to groups of people or tribes. Al-insan is humankind. Now some say the root of this word is nasia, which means to forget because humans tend to forget, but that is not as commonly used as root. It is common to understand the root from anisa as it, it, as it relates to being social, friendly, and seeking intimacy as humans normally do. We learned form 10 verb earlier, which means to seek permission to enter to get on social terms with others. Now this word, musta nisin, is the active participle of form 10 verb. It means seeking to remain for purposes of talking or conversation. This word tells you the context of this verse shown. Visitors were overstaying to, overstaying to seek conversation with the Prophet wasallam, but he was too shy to say even though he was troubled by this fact. So this verse was revealed about after eating to disperse and not stay for longer periods seeking conversation. That concludes our Quranic words for the day. If this video benefited you and if you would like to see more videos, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and hope to meet you for the next session. Assalamu alaikum.